So we have here a graph. So we'll start right off with Oizerga. The origin's right there. Y-axis is position. X-axis is time. The intercept, we do have a 0, 0 intercept and no x-intercept. We can read position and time. The gradient is delta x over delta t, which is the velocity in the area is meters, seconds, x times t meters, seconds, which is nothing useful. So now we'll see um, what we have going on. We'll draw a picture. We have a block uh, x of mass 2 kilograms travels across a horizontal surface toward a block y of unknown mass. x then collides elastically elastically, which means the kinetic energy is conserved. And so we know it's bouncy. A graph of the position is a function of time for x is shown. They're made of the same material. Which of the predictions are correct about the motion of the block, uh, block y immediately after the collision? So <clears throat> a couple things to notice from the graph that we have two distinct portions. We have this part where we have a velocity that is equal to uh, 15 over five or three meters per second. And then afterward, it has a velocity of five over five or one meter per second. And so this is for block X. So what we know then is that this has some momentum we know the, moment, the momentum decreases, and we know the kinetic energy decreases, and we know the velocity decreases. So let's see um, what things might be true about y. The acceleration of y immediately after is greater than the acceleration immediately before the collision. Wait a minute. Beforehand, the block isn't moving at all, let alone changing its speed. Acceleration is delta v over delta t. So before the collision, there is no change in velocity. And afterward, it's traveling at a constant speed, so it is also no change in velocity. Choice A doesn't make any sense at all. Kinetic energy of y immediately after the collision is greater than the kinetic, e kinetic energy of x immediately after the collision. So that's a possibility. We know that the speed of y increased, the speed of x decreased, so we have a change in kinetic energy. We'll come back to that after we look at the others. The magnitude of the change in momentum of y from immediately before the collision to immediately after the collision is more than the magnitude of the change in momentum of delta x. No, the law of conservation momentum, which is the total momentum of the system is constant, means that whatever change in momentum of one, there will be an equal and opposite change in momentum of the other. So that can't possibly uh, be true either. So that's out. Momentum of the system consisting of block X and Y immediately after the collision is less than the momentum immediately before the collision. That's false. Linear momentum is always conserved. So where we are is we've seemed to have eliminated all choices except for choice B, so that should be our answer. So it would be nice for us to also positively show that that is the answer. So let's calculate the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of x is 1 half mv squared. So we have 1 half of 2, and the velocity was 3, 3 squared. So that gives us a kinetic energy of 9 joules. And the kinetic energy of y, 1 half mv squared, Oh, well, let's find the kinetic energy afterward. Excuse me. Find the kinetic energy of x afterward. So 1 half of 2 times 1 squared is going to be 1 joule. So what that means is the x had 9 joules of energy. It went down to 1 joule of energy, which means that y now has... 8 joules of kinetic energy because EK was conserved. So the kinetic energy of X plus the kinetic energy of Y must be equal to the kinetic energy of X prime plus the kinetic energy of Y prime. And if it was 0 for Y beforehand, we had 9 for X ahead of time, and afterward we only have 1, well that means that Y must be 8. 
So Y immediately after the collision is greater than kinetic energy of X immediately after the collision. 8 is greater than 1. So that's true. And so not only have we eliminated the wrong answers, we've positively shown why B is the correct.